Hello friends, in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at three different projects that help you polish your skills as a .NET developer. In this project we're going to be going through from easiest to hardest where we're going to be seeing how we can actually implement different functionalities that's going to help you build your skills when it comes to .NET, implementing different types of complex features as well it will help you actually understand how a full application from end to end should work when it comes to .NET. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have a GitHub repo and this is available publicly, I will link it down in the description down below. And and within this GitHub repo, what I have is I have three different projects. So as you can see here, we have a quick introduction about why do you want to need it. And then we have project one, project two, and project three. So project one is basically a task management system API. Project two is a blocking platform. And project three is going to be an e-commerce website. So let's take a look at task one, which is or basically project one, which is going to be the task management system. So within project, the main goal behind it is for you to be able to familiarize yourself by basically creating a basic CRUD operation, implementing some kind of a JWT authentication have some role-based access policies integrated within your application or with your API so basically anyone who's trying to make any types of requests they will need to be able to be authenticated and have the right privilege in order for them to execute so then we're going to be seeing how we can actually integrate Firebase and SendGrid for notifications so in case we need to send notification to someone based on those task management we can utilize these services and lastly you can actually either utilize AWS S3 or Azure Blob Storage to store all of the different attachments that a user might want Want to upload to their to-do list. So here we're going to have additional components, which is going to be the notification, either Firebase or SendGrid. This could be as simple as email that you need to send and the other one, which is file storage. So the main reason that we have these two external components here is for you to be able to understand how you can actually authenticate with third-party services. You need to think about key management, how you can actually going to be storing them, how are you going to be able to load them at runtime, how this application is going to be integrated with them, etc, etc. So this is going to be a really good practice of how we actually to integrate within third-party services. So as we can see from this diagram, we can see the request will come in directly through our API gateway. It will go through the authentication service. From that, it's going to be utilized by the user service, where we're going to be basically seeing the authorization level in place and then the project service, etc, etc. So we have all of these different layers that a request might need to come into place. And we can see also where a potential integration with those notification service can be. So for example, if a user tried to log in and they have invalid credentials, we send an email to that email saying that to that user saying that there was a invalid login to your account maybe try to check it there if a project is added we can send an email saying a project has been added to your account etc etc so we can see the different levels of integration notification that we might need to add as well we can see where we're going to have a database where we're going to be storing all of this information this could be sql server sql Lite, postgres whatever you want and through there this is maybe not the right place but maybe here we can actually upload the files that you want to do so for example if you want to attach a document to your application you can actually do that uh, or basically your task you can actually do that from here but this may be to be linked better to a task rather than database but just is basically a high level overview so then the next step we can see the setup of the project so here it will take you through all of the different sections that you need to implement for this project so we can see here the project setup the database design the authentication framework project management etc etc so all of these different sections and how you can actually do them and through this basically once you were able to accomplish all of that and you integrate with any of the third party service that we have mentioned you'll be able to have a full task management system where you can actually have a proper authentication, proper authorization, third-party integrations, and it will give you a full overview about how you can actually build a CRUD operation when it comes to .NET. It will actually teach you the different scope of this uh, CRUD operation from a REST point of view, and, and it will help you actually understand the different authentication authorization flow. So now that we have finished with the first project, which is the easiest one, now we're going to go to project number two, which is a bit more complex. And within project number two, we're going to be focusing on adding more complex features. So we're going to have a commenting system. We're going to have tagging and categorizing, search integration, some kind of a notification system similar to what we had before, as well as social sharing integration. So we can see through this complexity highlight that we're going to have the most complex one, I would say the search as well as the commenting system, because basically search will require us to utilize either Elasticsearch or any of type of other like uh, Allegolia or anything like that. As for the commenting system, we're going to have complex data structure inside our database to make sure that the comments are actually shown. We might need to think about caching. We might need to think about uh, using some kind of non-SQL database. It's up to you to decide, but this is where the complexity might come from. So here we can see the additional components that we might need to use. So notification system is going to be really similar to what we had before. The search engine is going to be most probably Elasticsearch, where you'll be able to search through your blog post and through the text rather than relying on a SQL search. And the social media sharing in order for you to be able to share your blog post with third-party social media like X or Instagram, whatever it is. So here we can see also a very high level of the diagram, similar pattern, where we can see here that where the Elasticsearch 
search can be integrated as well as a notification system can be integrated. So the steps here, what we need to do is similar to the steps that we have taken previously. The main differences here is we're going to be having integrating with Elasticsearch as well as creating this complex commenting and basically tagging within our databases. As for the last project that we currently have, which is going to be the e-commerce API, the e-commerce API basically takes the complexity to another level where we're going to having a much more of a distributed implementation where we're going to have a complex product management where we're going to be able to actually search for different product, filter them, we're going to have the capability to add batching product, etc. We're going to have the capability to have a shopping cart and checking out. We're going to have an integration with a payment gateway like Stripe. You can have a demo account on Stripe to experiment with that. We're going to have an ordering processing, an admin panel, as well as a security measure in place in order for us to protect all of the admin operations. So all of this will fit into a real case scenario of actually building some kind of a distributed application on .NET. So you can come to this application thinking about it in a way where you can actually want to have everything in a monolith, or you can actually think about it if you want to build it in a distributed application sheet. You can think about it in a microservice architecture, how you can actually connect all of these different components together, how you can utilize different Azure services to do so, or AWS services to do so. So here we can see the different flexibility that this might able to give you in order for you to polish your skills in a more of a distributed or microservice architecture when it comes to building application. So the additional component is going to be a payment gateway as well as the email service. As well, if you'd like to add search here, uh, Elasticsearch will be a really good added value and uh, Elasticsearch will actually able to have search through all of the different products based on their different categories, etc. Here, as you can see, the flow of our application where we have the different integration points specifically with our third party services, email services. You can use this, you can actually shift wherever you want, but this is basically how the authentication service might you want to actually utilize or the email service might comes into place. As for the steps, similar to what we had before, I would say here all of those different steps, the complexity here will rely on how you want to architect also your application. If you want to go for a monolith approach or you want to go for a more of a microservices approach. So the goal behind all of this projects is to be able to help you as a developer to polish your skills as a So building a simple endpoint and basically implementing what we have done, it's, it's a good starting point. But in order for us to have the actual skills to utilize .NET in a real world application, we need to be able to create complex application. And we need to think about every single project in a different way. So we can see how a different project might work as a monolith. Another one can be working as a microservice architecture. One could be a hybrid approach. So we can see here how within these three types of project, how every single one of these scenarios will be able to fit in in order for us to have a project based on its requirement and based on the structure that we think it's needed. Again, this is very high level. I didn't want to go into a lot of details of how we should implement this. If you like a video where we can actually implementing one of this, one of these projects, please let me know. I'll make sure to add one of these videos and basically we can have a series, for example, building these projects together. Or if you're interested in one of the topics that these projects have covered, please also let me know and we create a video. As always, if you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.